Hey, Freak Leaks. <laughs> Thanks for coming back. On this episode, we're going to talk about body image, self-esteem, and self-confidence in the bedroom after 40. We're going to talk about why body image, self-esteem, and confidence play such a huge role in the bedroom and how mind-fucking yourself into a body-positive headspace can result in the best sex ever. I'm ready. ready. You ready? I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready, too. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us for the Four Freaky Girls podcast, episode 14, Body Image, Self-Esteem, and Sexual Confidence in the Bedroom After 40. Um, yeah, so uh, this is going to be interesting because, you know, I feel like we're going to tackle a lot of like old, non-self-serving uh-huh. beliefs and Myth. things that we've and been told, especially yeah. since, you know, everybody Not here true. is, you know least coming from the 80s or before the 80s so right. this is going to be interesting and just how different everything is now so um yeah 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 okay real quick though um we have a guest this is miss mj mj go mm-hmm. ahead and introduce yourself real quick and uh tell the peoples what you what you do what you about and all that good stuff all right. Um, well, my name is MJ and I am 42, actually, as of just a couple weeks ago. Um, I do physical therapy and I'm a mother of four children and I just belly dance and I Latin dance and I have so much fun. I'm living my best life after 40. I'm telling you. That's, that's right. That's Love the way it. Be. Yes. <laughs> well, welcome to the show. We certainly appreciate you being here. Um, all right, y'all, let's go ahead and dive right into this thing. So topic one is, girl, leave the lights on. Um, you ever wonder what makes us so insecure about showing our bodies to potential or current partners? Um, us too. So we're going to shed some light on some of the most common beliefs and practices that make may be holding you back from being your sexiest self in the bedroom. So let's start with the whole lights on thing like lights on like why do you think it is that you know people are like like women are ashamed of having the lights on i'm like you know turn them lights off i need my fantasy (laughs) is that what it's different different. no i think it's a a body image issue (laughs) oh yeah i've always had it um i didn't have it as much before i lost weight as i do now though but I'm okay with candlelight and low lights, but then bright out, you do, mm-mm, we are not making a video here. <laughs> I mean, unless you are, you know, and then, you know. If you are, no judgment, to- go <laughs> for it. <laughs> right. What do y'all think? Like, I, I think it's mostly like, we're so self-conscious about how we look, what how we look doing certain things. And um, there's actually, a, I think it was a TikTok like challenge out right now where it's like you set your phone down and you like peek over your camera and that's how you look like on top or something and then like <laughs> so, but I think it's just where it just is people being self conscious about how they look doing certain things or like in the bedroom like how you look on top or you know what your faces look like or you know, how your boobs are bouncing up and down and, you know, all the things I think we get into our heads so much that it's it's just easier for us not to be in our heads if all the lights are out. He, go, yeah, mm-hmm. he can only touch me, he, you know, or she can only touch me and they, they can't see everything, but they can feel mm-hmm. everything. Do you feel like how, okay, no, let me ask you this. Let me, let me rephrase. How do you feel what do you feel is different about when you were, say, in your 20s having sex, like your your body image or your confidence or whatever? How do you feel like it's different from now that, you know, we're 40 plus? Well, for me, um, I know I had children a little bit young. I mean, I was like 19, 20, but I feel like when I was a little bit younger, you know, we were just you know, doing it. And I just really didn't even care. I mean, I was a lot heavier then than I am now, but I mean, my partner partners back then or whatever, they didn't really care to like hold me, fondle me, touch every little part of my body. 
as now I am, you know, older, you know, over 40. And it's just like my boyfriend right now, he just wants to see and touch everything. And it's just, it's kind of nerve wracking a little bit. It used to be, you know, we were first together, but and now I'm just like, okay, leave them lights on. You know what I mean? He likes it. It's like, oh my gosh, you should see that, babe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And That's see, good. I think I'm just the opposite, though. Like when I was younger in my 20s, I was more self conscious about what my body looked like and, you know, all the things. And as I've gotten older, I've gotten more confident so we're like you get what you get you know like this is me you know you get what you get but I also see the maturity in my partners as well as I've gotten older where they don't give a shit (laughs) like you know not necessarily don't give a shit they like it like they like Mm -hmm. the the roles they like the you know stretch marks they like all of that Mm -hmm. like that actually turns my partner's on more than it did, you know, when I was in my 20s. So yeah. for me, it I flipped it where I'm more confident now in the bedroom than I was in my 20s and even early 30s. I had a 45 year old tell me last week that he loved him some older women because they knew who they were and they were more secure in how their bodies look because they know this is me. Right. This is it. This is what you get. Mm-hmm. You know, it's. Um, yeah. And then I've had some 60 year olds tell me, you know, them 45 year olds ain't got nothing on Big Daddy with Viagra. (laughs) You know, (laughs) I may have to join our local senior center. (laughs) Hello? (laughs) How you doing, Daddy? Right. Right. Where's that beach house at? (laughs) That's funny. Now, let me ask this. Um, Do you think it has anything to do with, like, the mentality and the things that we were taught, you know, when we were watching, like, our parents and, you know, grandparents and all of them, like, come up? I mean, because I know we we talked about it in a previous episode that, you know, they didn't do a whole, they didn't share a whole lot, you know, Mm -hmm. with us. But just watching them and how they move and just, you know, their conversations, um, they didn't really boast a lot of sexual confidence, you know, when it came to that kind of thing. Does that make sense? What I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, yeah, it does. You think that that was influential, mm-hmm. like in a way, cause I mean, I would hear them talk about, you know, like things like, Oh, you know how fat I got or whatever, but like, I don't know. Like it just didn't seem to be stopping them from, you know, doing their thing either. So right. I don't know. Um, I know that I see a lot of stuff on the internet and they talk about how, like, you know, like you were saying, friend, like some, you know, they like people who women who are over 40 plus because they are a little more confident. I think it's because they kind of reach a point of fuck it. I think so. Like, it is. You, it I mean, is. do you think that's confidence though? Or do you think that's just, you know, I think it's coming it. to reality it is, what it is. It is what it is. I mean, right. none of us are getting any younger. And if you've got the miracle cure for that, please let me know. <laughs> um, right. and, and but I think is come, that you do get confidence though. yeah but you yeah. also come to the realization that this is me like right. you know I've lost literally over half of myself in the last 10 years mm-hmm. and I have some loose skin and some flab and it's like the partner that I'm with is just going to understand I'm not confident enough to keep the lights on low mm-hmm. lights candlelight that's amazing to me Okay. Right. Give me time to adjust because if you're just Mr. Right now, I'm not ready to let you into my life like that. Mm-hmm. Now, as you show me more about you, then I'll gain more confidence. And then that's where the lights will slowly start coming back up. And so we might be making our own little video. Okay. You, right. know. <laughs> you know, it takes, I think it takes time. It, I'm just, and I'm speaking from a place of a woman my age. You know, I think it just takes time. Now we've been through so much of the bullshit, especially when you've been married multiple times or had multiple partners that look, you just got to accept me for who I am. And that comes with all the scars and the cellulite and the wrinkles and, you know, whatever else comes with age that fucks up on us that we have to get faked or, you know, just deal with it. Okay. So, um, Miss Bree, go ahead and introduce yourself really quickly or reintroduce yourself. Cause you know, we've had a chance to kind of hang out with you in the past. So just reintroduce yourself and, uh, let her, let the people know who you are and what you do. 
Hello, everybody. I'm Bree Graham, the real Mrs. Bree Graham. Um, I am a financial analyst and also an entrepreneur well, uh, with trucks and bags. I sell bags, accessories, um, and um, co-partner kind of like piggybacking off my husband who deals with automobiles. He has a truck. Uh, so that's where the trucks part of trucks and bags comes from. Um, and we're just entrepreneurs out here in 614. Awesome sauce. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming back and hanging with us. We appreciate yeah. it. Okay. Um, so now we were talking about um, body image and like some of the like old, you know, um, some of kind of the old things, you know, ideas or whatever, you know, centered around body image for women after 40 that, you know, may not be serving us. So what are some of the things that you've experienced as far as like having sex in your twenties and, you know, how confident you were, you may or may not been in your twenties versus being in your forties now. Oh, uh, well, I'm going to say being in my twenties, I was a lot more confident <laughs> Back then versus being in my forties. I'm going to say before marriage. Um, okay. In my twenties, I'm I'm young, I'm 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 thinner, you know, um I'm, I'm just I'm out there, I'm vibrant, I'm I'm hopeful, you know what I mean? In my forties, you know, things start to sag and not look so good as they did. Gravity hits and you know, you got gray hair in places that you didn't even have hair before. <laughs> <laughs> Big facts. <laughs> Big facts. <laughs> <laughs> and at 40, I think. 40 year old, well, not 40 year old, should I say older men? I, I would have to say it's an expect they 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 want so much more. A 20 year old man is just trying to, he's trying to get it. You know, he's just trying to get it, get it in. For, they want so much more in the bedroom than a 20 year old man. Back in my day, anyway. I don't know what these 20 year olds mm. are, but now there's so much more in the bedroom that's involved for our mm. age. It's like you just have to put so much more effort into it. So it's like, for me, I, I was feeling like intimidated. Like I just had to give so much, you know what I mean? So I felt I not a body shame. I just had to, to be so much, you know what I mean? So versus my twin. Okay. So is it, do you think that it's because you're in a relationship and it requires a little more intimacy and being more personal versus, you know, just having a jump off? No, no. That I was describing before I got married. No, now <laughs> that was before I got married. So now that I'm in a marriage, I don't feel that way. I'm actually much more confident now that I'm in a marriage mm -hmm. in a, in a, you know, when we were dating in a full fledged relationship, I was talking about with the jump offs with, okay. you know, mm -hmm. just while I was kicking it with or whatever, I felt like they expected these were older, you know, mature men, 30. Oh, got you. Okay. Okay. I felt like they expected so much more from an older woman, you know, mm -hmm. 20, 20, nine, you know, teenage young boys, 20s, um, early 20s, later 20s, they they really weren't expecting as much in the bedroom as the right. old. Now, my, do you do you get that? Like, because you're still actively dating. So do you do you feel that or do you feel like that's what you call? Oh, yeah. Off? Oh, yeah. These older men, they want a freak. <laughs> They want a freak. They want to put you in different positions because I think a lot of times they want to see if they still got it. But, you know, like they, but I, and also they've experienced more. And I think as we get older, we've experienced more, at, you know, younger to now, okay, like we got a skill set almost now. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they're trying to see what the skill set's like. Yeah. Um, so where, yeah, they, they, like you said, they expect more. You can't be a pillow princess in your 40s. <laughs> you know, you can do that in your 20s because, you know, they just they try to get their rocks off. 
But in your forties, you gotta participate. <laughs> you know what? When you I gotta was, participate. When I was in my early twenties, I knew nothing about sex. Like mm-hmm. I didn't know how to clap it. I didn't know how to do nothing. Try me now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> You got to do, yeah, you have to, you have to have a, have a, um, uh, and like you, and even if you, some, you know, women in their, at our age, they're, you know, like we're talking about today, where they're, you know, faking it till they make it because they don't have that positive body image, you know, but in the bedroom, it's like, you got to let that shit go because yeah. they're expecting, you know, you, you this age, you should know a little more, <laughs> you know, you should know what you're doing. And, you know, if you got body image issues or, you know, the self-confidence in itself, you know, that shows, I think it shows more at this age than it would have when we were in our 20s. Absolutely. Yeah. It's going to yeah. show performance. <laughs> right. In, in, in other words, it'll take away from the experience, you think? Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're going to say you got some whack ass <laughs> <laughs> now do you think do you, you think that, um, do you think <laughs> that it's as important to them like how we look versus how important it seems to be in our head Mm-mm. how we look they would say you in a muumu in a, a bonnet they do not care <laughs> just say well, like you Go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. Well, you know, you know, getting being older and everything like that, you know, and all these older men wanting like a certain skill set and stuff. I also feel like they want the outfits. They want the outfits. They want the heels. Yeah. Um, some of them want the makeup or whatever, yeah. hair. You know, like don't come up in here like in your robe. You know, what I'm saying like, <laughs> look, like what's up? Like, no, I want the whole thing. I, you know, I'm mm-hmm. like, okay. No, I was kidding. They do. <laughs> yes. I- I was, that's why I said I disagree with that because they absolutely, and I would say that's a difference from 20s versus older. In the 20s, right. they just trying to, they just trying, yeah. to they trying to bust a nut, period. Flat yeah. out, they just coming yeah. to get, care about you busting a nut, they just trying to get theirs. All right. 40s, no, they want the full, when I say the full nine, they want right. five glitter, outfit, heels, hair, yeah. makeup. Mm-hmm. Nails, they want the full experience. And if they I feel like if they don't get it at home, they're either they're gonna get it somehow, or they're either gonna watch it on porn mm-hmm. or strip club. There's right. something to fill that in their head. Cause I think as we get older, because just even as women, like as we get older, because even in our twenties, foreplay wasn't a big thing for us either. You know, like right. when our because we we were just like them, we wanted to get our rocks off, right. so th- and that wasn't a big deal. Like, yeah, we wanted you know somebody to go down or whatever, and that's that was foreplay. That was enough. You down there for two minutes? Okay, let's go. <laughs> you know, <laughs> now, <laughs> now it's like only two minutes. Like, I need you to go down there a little longer. <laughs> I haven't finished this so, bottle of wine yet. Go back. Exactly right. <laughs> But it's just as important for them now, too. Like, the foreplay, they see the benefits in the foreplay, and the foreplay starts even before you get in the bedroom. Like she said, they want the full nine, the outfit, going out to dinner, having a drink, role-playing, you know, all that stuff is, they see the benefits in that now. So, yeah, they want all that more now. Ooh, foreplay can start with you opening the door when they get home from work, and you're just resting. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, foreplay could be them. Them t- like Maya said in a previous episode, those text messages that you send it back and forth. You know, <laughs> just the anticipation. You know, right. um, the whole arrival and everything. Yeah, right. I agree with that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a good segue um, to go right on into topic two. Um, take them clothes off. So, since your mind is the biggest sex organ in your body. Um, being confident in your bedroom is vital to having the best sex ever. In this segment, we're going to drop some gems on how to rebuild your confidence so that you can finally feel like the dope ass sex spot that you truly are. So, um, Fran, I know you said that, you know, low lighting, that's your thing. Like you ain't really for the full blown, you know, light or whatever. To me, that's too personal. 
Okay. Like at, at my stage of life, it's too personal. I'm not ready to let somebody in that close yet. Like if you make it to where we can leave a bedroom lamp on, you know, you're getting somewhere with me. But, you know, if I'm just, if I still got you on the candle kick. Okay. Yeah. And I'm seeing, I'm just the kind of opposite of friend where I'm actively dating. I need you to see me in the daytime. Because if you can't handle this <laughs> in the daytime, you don't deserve the low lights and candles they, they, and the romance. <laughs> they can not see this to know if they can handle it. They can feel it. <laughs> so now I'm sorry. I mean, okay. But I get, okay, I, need, I get it. I was saying, I need you to see the full Monty so I can eliminate you if I need to. <laughs> so y'all heard, y'all heard the song Lizzo. Mm-hmm. Right. She got a little bit of a stomach, but that's okay. Yeah, that song. Okay, so I'm starting <laughs> to see, I'm starting to see more of that thing. I feel like, you know, when people are talking about women over 40, like on social media now, like that's, I'm starting to see more of the appreciation for, look, I know you done been through some things, you know, I know your body done been through some things and, you know, we done established all that already. So, you know, okay, I need you to get over that so we can get to it. So like right. what advice or, you know, would you have for, you know, our audience for, you know, some of those women who are watching, they're just really just not okay with like, they want to do it. You know, they, they want to be confident on the outside and the inside, but they're just not yet. Like what kind of things did, you know, you ladies do to help boost your confidence so that you can overcome that. So y'all can really have fun, you know, when you're with your partner. See, I used to be a, it has to be black as night in the bedroom before I'm going to let you <laughs> do anything to me yeah. but someone told me once to try this occasionally turn all the lights on in your bedroom yeah. lay down fully naked on your bed and masturbate keep mm-hmm. your eyes open and it did start to help mm-hmm. okay i like that yeah and, and i'll tell you i've been hearing a lot from ladies you know in 40 plus and they're talking about their how bad their sex life is well maybe you need to take a step back and experiment a little bit more with yourself. Maybe that'll make you feel more comfortable with it. Do you because think it's because not, they don't know their bodies? Yeah, because if, you know, in my generation, we were grown up told don't masturbate. No, that's bad. You know, mm. if you get caught doing it, you're bad. You're a little whore or whatever. Um, but I think that's, I think a lot of the ladies in, in this generation of mine have issues because of be, maybe being told that or not being talked about openly enough about sex. Explore your body. If you don't know your body, if if you don't know what you need and what you want, how are you gonna let your partner know? Right. Girl, take them ha- take them fingers in and out of places you ain't never been. Mm-hmm. Mm. And okay. I think that helps. I think that would help. Okay. So for everybody, I think everybody on this panel at some point has been on a weight loss journey. Is currently on a weight loss journey. I know I am. Um, how did the sex differ after you accomplished or experienced some weight loss as far as like how it made you feel, you know, how it made your partner feel. Cause I, I feel like that's important. Cause I feel like a lot of, there's a lot of us who have like centered in on, you know, really starting to do us, like really making up, making up your mind, you know, that it's okay to do you, you know, after you turn 40. So like, right. how did that work out for anybody? There. I'll, I'll say mine too, but I'll let y'all go first. For me, um, because of some medical issues that I have, my weight fluctuates. So okay. I be a super thick to medium thin to much thin. So um, as I'm going through transitions, what I do is I take the lead. And that's what I was going to say following Fran. Um, take the lead um, where you know that you'll feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. That way you don't even have the opportunity to feel uncomfortable. Um, make it to where they they're they're following you to, to where you have you're, you'll be confident in what's going on because you have taken the lead to the lead to make it a situation where you're in charge. What's going on is is what you want to have go on. Hmm. Uh, that is not only a turn on for most men, where you know you're you're taking charge of the situation, but also you'll be most confident because that's what you want to have go on. So for me, when I'm doing that weight loss, I make sure 
if I'm wearing something, it's what, you know, I'm comfortable in the, the positions. I'm flipping the positions of the positions that I'm comfortable in. You know, I'm doing things that I feel comfortable doing. Okay. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Who else? Well, um, for me, um, cause I've lost a lot of weight too. And, um, I had some, you know, hanging skin and everything like that. Um, you know, I've always been out there, even when I was a lot larger, I've, I was a belly dancer. Um, you know, a lot of women would come up to me and be like, Oh my gosh, girl, like, I just, I love how you just do that. And you know, you're just, you know, you're, you're that size. I'm like, girl, well, why not? You know? Um, I mean, yeah, I had a little bit of self-confidence issues back in the day, but you know what? I just got out there and had my bra, my belt on and my little skirt and out there shimmy and getting it, you know? Um, but as far as like the bedroom goes, um, is, you know, I just look at myself naked, I look at myself naked. I turn the lights on. Um, and I appreciate my body. I appreciate all the, the lumps and bumps that I have, um, sagging here and there. And I um, mean, you know, I've talked to my boyfriend and other partners about it and, you know, they love it. They're like, you know, this is just you, this is you. It's um, specific to you. Um, I could see a little skinny old girl or whatever, you know, that's, I guess, perfect body, um, what some people would call like, but I don't want to see that. I want to see how you are, you know, you're a real woman, you know, with real curves and they just love mm -hmm. that. It's a real big turn on for them. And it's a big turn on for me too. You know, how has, how has the weight loss made you, made your sex life better? Because um, it's made well, more confidence. Yeah, I definitely feel like that because I can get into certain positions, you know, you I've always that been part. pretty, <laughs> <laughs> I've always been pretty flexible, you know, but, um, you know, it's like a little bit more so now, like my big uh, thing was I want to be held against the wall while you're getting it, you know what I mean? And now I'm like to a weight where that can happen. So I'm like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> <goals> right there. <laughs> sure. goals. yes. So I guess for me, I've actually, I've always been a big girl, like since I, I can remember, I've always been a big girl. And actually like right now I'm probably at my biggest. Um, but I also can say in the same breath that I'm probably, as far as my sex life is probably the most vibrant right now <laughs> for me. So um, for me, it's, it's affected my sex life, both negatively and positively, um, I just had to get to a place where I had to find my people. Like I had to find, you know, people who appreciated my size, you know, instead of that being a negative for them. Right. You know, so um, so that helped with the confidence. And then just like, I mean, even what Fred said, masturbation. Masturbation is amazing, <laughs> you know, because you start to love your own self. And, you know, and for a while there, I did have to fake it until I became it, you know, like, so I had to like act like I love myself until I actually like, you know, I actually think you look good. Like, you know, like I, I used to try to hide my boobs because I've always had big boobs. I used to try to hide my boobs. Like I even to the point where I used to like ban them a little. You know, so so they wouldn't look as big. But now most of the shirts you find me, I got some cleavage going. <laughs> you know where I'm yeah. showing them <laughs> off more. <laughs> where I'm showing them off more because to me now it's you know it's an asset for me that attracts you know people who you know are attracted to that. So like I said, I'm finding my people. I, as I'm getting older, to so where that helps with my confidence, to where I know. Once I get naked, it's not somebody looking at me like, oh, my God, you know, it's somebody like, oh, my God, <laughs> you know, like they love it. So and that, again, helps the confidence in the bedroom. And like MJ said, I've always been flexible. <laughs> so I always <laughs> tell people, don't let the smooth taste fool you. This bitch right. doesn't get a leg. Right. <laughs> hey, I tell them, I don't care, six years old, arthritis or not, try me. <laughs> right, <laughs> and now they got devices and stuff where I might you might not be able to pick me up, but I got I got a door swing where you act like you're picking me up. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> but then there's even and then there's more like this. I don't know necessarily a movement where there's more men like it's socially acceptable now for men to like big girls. 
So, you know, they don't have to hide it anymore. You don't have to be their dirty little secret anymore. Right. So they like, you know, for like, I think I saw a video of this guy. He was like, um, people think I go to the gym to, you know, get healthy and, you know, uh, look good. He's like, no, I go to the gym so I can pick my big girl up during sex. <laughs> <laughs> That's <Wow>. awesome. <laughs> um, I think for me, I know that I had to have a lot of like, I had to have a, a lot of conversations with myself and, you know, um, and with my fiance, just because I, I had so there was so much self hate that I had mm-hmm. to like overcome. Just you know, just I could go and it was so easy for me to just pick everything out about myself and my body that I didn't like about myself. You know, when I started having kids, like I wasn't necessarily ready to start having kids when I did. I mean, but I did. I did legit have my first child at twenty five. Like so, I don't know. It just you know, your body changes, you know what I mean? And I just, I wasn't prepared for it, I guess, you know, I was extra tired all the time. And I don't know, my self-esteem just took a nosedive, like when I became a mom, you know, and just feeling like I had to put the expectations of, you know, being a mom and being in a relationship and all of that stuff first. Um, And then after a while, I was just like, you know, I can't, have these, you know, thoughts about myself and my body anymore. Like it just wasn't, it wasn't working for me. So I just had to start showing myself love in the mirror. I mean, honestly, like looking real stupid, talking to the mirror, like Mm -hmm. literally touching parts of my body, you know, that I didn't really, I felt like I wanted to change, you know, until I started actually changing them, but just like showing myself love. And like you, like you said, Maya, I had to fake it for a while because I just thought I was so chubby. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like in my mind, I was chubby I don't I don't know but eventually you know that turned around and now I'm like shit girl you don't have two kids you don't been through this you don't been through that aches and pains and you know like ailments and shit and we still here shit so you know like it just kind of turned itself around and I you know I started to appreciate my body more and you know yeah I mean you know starting to lose weight I mean that definitely helped with the flexibility so you know (laughs) <laughs> I'm a firm believer in affirmations. Like yeah. affirmations are huge. Like, I was about to say that I talk to my yeah. Family. I speak self love so much into my family, into my kids, into my right. mother, my coworkers. I'm like, at one point, the self love that I'm I'm talking to other people, I speak that into myself. So mm-hmm. every look at myself like, girl, you about to be 46. You got these kids. You have a great career. You have a great. Yeah. Girl, you look good. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like what I I used to not take um compliments well. Like when somebody would compliment me, it was always I gave an excuse of why, you know, I looked or like why because like, oh girl, you look good in that dress. Oh yes, you know the you know, like I used to not take confidence, you know, compliments well. Now, uh, somebody, I think, I don't know who it was. Somebody just said, just say thank you. Like, just say, <laughs> just take the compliment, yeah. just say yeah. thank you. Mm-hmm. And, and, but you'll know, I noticed a difference in my confidence when I would just, like, not even think of an excuse or, or a reason or, you know, some something, like, to dismiss the compliment. If, and when I just said, thank you, you know, like, even the guys approaching you at the, you know, the gas station. Like, oh, girl, you looking good. It can be the most, you know, most center compliment. But like, oh, girl, you looking like a, you know, a snack or something. You know, like, like, oh, thank you. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> real vocal, like, thank you. You know, but I mean, it can really make your day. It can be the, you know, a snaggle to, you know, homeless man at the gas station. But he yep. tell you look good. <laughs> you feeling good the rest of the day. Yes. <laughs> But yeah. yeah, like yeah, taking compliments um, and just saying thank you that can make a big difference. Because I know, like, I still have friends who you know do that. We're like, you know, girl, you look good. You know, you look like you lose some weight. Oh, I can't tell. I'm not. You know, just say thank you because mm-hmm. <laughs> you know somebody else is noticing. That's a good thing. You know, you that's what you're trying to do. If that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to lose weight. Somebody notices it. Acknowledge that. Right. But, but yeah, just, you know, thank you. Um, 
I was going to say one of the things, I don't know, are we get to this point where like different tips that we're giving people with mm-hmm. self-confidence? Okay. So uh, for those of you that don't know, I do pure romance. Um, I'm a pure romance consultant. Um, and one of the things that we did a few years ago um, was a lingerie challenge uh, mm-hmm. where we challenged our customers um, to purchase, you know, different lingerie and wear a different piece of lingerie at least two or three times a week. Um, and actually, there was one where we just did this 30 days. 30 days, you wear a piece of lingerie every day, um, you know, whether it be to bed or, you know, whatever. Just wear a piece of lingerie. Um, because one of the things I always encourage women when it comes to lingerie is that lingerie is not for your partner. The lingerie is for you. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that's going to boost your confidence because lingerie is designed to accentuate the parts that we love about ourselves and also hide the parts that we don't like about ourselves when mm-hmm. you're purchasing the right type, you know, the right design of lingerie. So that's why I used to help, you know, or I still do help customers with picking the right, you know, type of lingerie. So that way it can help you boost your confidence. Um, and the results that, you know, I had a few customers who took on the challenge. They did the 30 day lingerie challenge and they actually, one of the biggest things they said, my confidence is out of, you know, off the charts now. Like I feel a lot more confident just because, you know, I let go of some of the, you know, things, like you said, you pick apart about yourself and just, you know, concentrated more on the things that I liked about myself. Like some women, you know, They like, you know, the size of their breasts. So, you know, they bought lingerie that accentuated that. Some ladies like, you know, the badonka dog. So they bought lingerie that accentuated that. And then the the compliments they would get from their partner, you know, helped in the confidence as well. Um, And also when it comes to, you know, sex, the more you have it, the more you like it. So that also boosts your confidence. Mm-hmm. as well so that's i wanted to give that piece as far as my my tip yeah i i think that um also just you know falls into self-care like mm-hmm. you know you don't think about self-care you know as one of the things that are really important when it comes to sex but when you're talking about body confidence like you have to take that time to take care of yourself you know, um, I know for me, it was like just taking the time to shave, bitch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like shave, curl your hair, mm-hmm. you know, put some lip gloss on. I mean, just, you know, keep your nails clean. Just just stuff that, you know, it, it'll trickle down into, you know, the bedroom. If you're taking care of yourself on a daily basis or just finding some time to put yourself first. I think it really starts there. You know, because if you won't just look cute for no damn reason at all, like you don't really need a reason to look cute. But I mean, I used to be in that that mindset space where like I felt like I needed a reason, you know, or an occasion to like put some makeup on or, you know, try a different hairstyle or, you know, just polish my nails or some shit like that. You know what I mean? Because, again, back then, you know, I was so caught up in being a mom and, you know, making sure that I give my all, you know, and then I didn't have anything left at the end of the night. So I really wasn't trying to fuck, you know what I mean? Um, But then that started becoming more important. And so I found that the more I started taking care of myself and addressing, you know, my need to get myself just looking right, it made me want to look cute when I got into bed with him. You know what I'm saying? It made me want to look like a snack. You know, and so I felt like he started picking up on that energy as well. And, you know, then things just got even better. So I definitely feel like, you know, even though it doesn't seem like it would be the most obvious thing, but, you know, like do stuff to take care of yourself, you know, just little shit throughout the day. Um, Even if you can't go full on, you know, just find some time during the week and get yourself together and then maintain, you know, from that point or whatever in Eventually, you're going to feel like putting that stuff on, you know, I mean, even if you're not in the lingerie, I mean, because I'll admit I don't put lingerie on a lot. Um, I think it's just because, you know, the way these kids are set up, (laughs) 
trying to get their asses in bed at nine o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> and before you know it, it's nine thirty, and we like, what you still doing that? And my kids, I really mean that eight year old or that nine year old. Excuse me, she just turned nine. Sorry, the, that nine year old. That thing, she a blocker. Right. She a blocker and she got a hero. Yeah. Put it out there. Yeah. <laughs> so she be trying to stay up and hang, and we be like, take your ass to bed. You know what right. I'm saying? Trying to right. adults. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like we trying to get it, you know, we trying to do we trying to chill. We need some chill right. time. We need some adult chill time. So yeah. Um, so I don't always make it to the lingerie. But I do have things that are not lingerie though that um that he likes. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. So mine um, is mine's is uh he likes big white cotton t shirts and cute little panties and my hair just mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I'm missing of that too because there are children in the home, but it doesn't mm-hmm. always be lingerie, but just something that he likes, something mm-hmm. he likes like being doesn't always have to be hair, nails, that whatever he likes. Right. I'm missing when I'm doing something or buying something, it's something that he likes. Right. He likes so just being cognizant. Yeah. When you're out and about or taking doing stuff, you're all. Mm-hmm. I mean, just getting a bra and panty set that is favorite color, you know, <laughs> like <it'd> be, you right. know, that could be considered lingerie. We do some role playing too. Um, yeah, our thing, our thing right now is uh, talking in those old English accents or just like you know the uh, the whole verbiage. Oh calling, um, he's calling me his lady. His lady. I'm calling him my lord. Oh, oh, I love it. That's why I'm on my knees. That's oh. amazing. <laughs> Doubts are making me horny. That's what's like it. making me horny. I love it. Okay. Um, so, do you have any other? We have any other tips or tricks, or you know, a uh, uh, bedroom uh, lotion? Shenanigans we want to share? Just masturbate, masturbate, masturbate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I turned some music on. You know, mm-hmm. Dance I, back in the day, yeah, and I still I like the quiet storm. But you know, there's some times where you know you just got to put a little bit of um, energy music on and just get that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It just <laughs> that right. music, man. Is, which, yes. Were you watching me before we started recording? Because that's exactly what I was doing. <laughs> 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 okay, I could have said I was masturbating before we started recording. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's still pregame, you know. Right. Yeah. What about know, like I'm dancing baby. or strip tease or chair dancing mm-hmm. or anything like? Do we do any yeah. of those things? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Learning new skills. Yeah, you could do some. I so I was. I think nobody said it. Porn. <laughs> porn. Yeah. Nobody. No. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> porn gives me confidence. Yeah, I, that. That I can do something. I- I can do that. Like, it gives me confidence in, you know, certain positions. Like, okay, I think I can try that. Um, and but we like yeah. to we like to watch ourselves. We don't like to watch right. Ourselves. We make mm-hmm. we got several videos. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we got some right. in the chamber too. <laughs> we do. Right. Yeah. yeah. Poor don't have to be somebody else. It can be your poor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Although I will say some porn male should definitely boost your confidence because you know you watching porn and then Bula Ho Betty, you know what I'm saying, pop on the TV and she got right? and nails missing and oh. yeah. Stars, I would definitely know, suggest watching amateur crazy. porn. Yeah, <laughs> definitely amateur porn. Not the not the productive porn, like the not the produced porn. The amateur porn is definitely gonna give you a confidence. <laughs> I'm gonna be on there, and I'm like, "Girl, like, <laughs> thank you." <laughs> you right. Right. <laughs> by myself, for real, like, right. no turn right. on, just you know, she on there giving giving it her all, her heart and soul, right. all. Right. Like, ponytail, her head. right. Yeah. But, I mean, I I would just pick me back off of what you said to be as far as self care. You know, that's a big thing. You know, just doing something for yourself to make yourself mm-hmm. feel better. 
um, make yourself feel more, you know, sexier, confident, um, you know, and just and, and those things that you are self-conscious about, you know, make, being mindful of, you know, OK, if you don't like it, fix it. However, go. that yeah. looks like fix it. If that means true. going to the gym, if that means, you know, not eating that brownie in the middle of the night, you know, or if it means, not you know, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm going to eat the brownie. Um, but, but I mean, just certain things like, and if, if that means cosmetic for you, like I never, um, you know, talk down about somebody who wants to seek out, you know, cosmetic something to make themselves feel better. Mm-hmm. you know to make their confidence go up if that's what's gonna help you then that's what's gonna help you so I don't, you know i would never say you know oh, you shouldn't get cosmetic surgery for some people that's what they need that's what they need to make themselves feel confident about themselves so yeah, yeah but um but definitely affirmations that's that's my big thing affirmations is, is affirmation for me also, just being open with your partner. Does your partner even know that you're self-conscious? Yeah. Right, because most of the time, they don't even know. Yeah, they, they don't even care. But them and tell them that, that may be all that you need to boost your confidence. They can say, right. gosh, why are you self-conscious about that? I love this, that, and the third. Right, That's right. The whole problem right there. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely attest to that. That was a, that was a huge game changer for me when we had a conversation um, and I mean, I won't disclose the conversation, but I'll just say this, like I kind of dropped a bomb about how insecure I was about myself. Mm-hmm. And once I did, um, he was very, very nurturing after that. Like, mm-hmm. it was like, damn, I wasn't expecting you to say that, but it sure explains a lot. And then going forward, it just got better and better. And I even started to feel better about myself. And he gave me that extra support that I needed He didn't know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, your partners are not mind readers, you know what I mean? So like you, sometimes if you're, especially if you're with somebody who you're know that you're going to be with for a while, or you're interested in being with for a while, or there may be, Mm -hmm. you know, there might be a chance like, yeah, I feel like that's definitely a conversation that you should have with them so that you can at least give them the opportunity to support you in that way. For sure. you, know, you can have all the self-confidence in the world and but we all have those moments where we lose some of our self-confidence oh, yeah. and you may not even want to go back to your partner you may need to be validated by somebody else so i think that's also where a strong inner circle comes in where your girls mm-hmm. will tell that you look bad in that don't you go change <laughs> right, right. Him what he thinks i literally You're had good. that last night last night me and my friend went shopping and i'm like looking at myself in the mirror like this does not look good and i like came out the dressing room and she was like oh bitch that looks good and i'm like yeah. really? <laughs> you know it made me change my whole mindset about the outfit mm-hmm. like really right it looks mm-hmm. good. She's like, oh yeah you put some hair with it and, like she was like going up like oh yeah that looks good and i'm like oh just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay. Well, uh, we just about the time. Is there anything else that you all want to add before we uh, wrap this up? Any last words of wisdom, advice? Roll the play. Uh, Roll play. What did they start with? What should they start with, MJ? What's that? What should they start with? Yeah. What scenario? What scenario? Mm, I would say, my liege, what Mm. might I do for you this evening? (laughs) Oh, okay. (laughs) Find me a Viking. Oh, Oh, a Viking. I don't know. I know. My boyfriend's, he's Nordic. It works. (laughs) (laughs) Does he have like the little hat? With the, oh, the, the horn. I, bu- I bought him one. I bought him one. And I have some pretty sexy bloomers. Pretty sexy bloomers. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Yes. I've always wanted to do an Mbaka, like a <laughs> role play it with Mbaka. Oh yeah. <laughs> I've always oh wanted god. to do that role play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe like the like the maid or I don't know anybody I don't the know nurse. Mm-hmm. the nurse the nurse yeah 
the I'd team. have to be the nurse because if you don't behave yourself, I'm going <laughs> to smack that ass. Right. <laughs> yeah. You just want to smack the shit out of somebody. That's all. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't already learn about your sensual sadistic ass. We already know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to hit somebody real quick. You know. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's, that's her foreplay. I love it. <laughs> but yeah, okay, I would just but, say love yourself, you know, love it. Well, love all the things about yourself the good, bad, ugly, and the, you know, chubby. <laughs> and touch and yourself. Again, Don't be afraid to touch yourself. And fake it till you become it if you need to. Yeah. Just, you know, do it. Yeah. Okay. Well, this was definitely a good one. Um, hopefully we help some people out there so that you can start to feel more confident in yourself. Um, as always, if you have any questions, you want to hit us up. Um, you can hit us up at Four Freaky Girls Podcast um, on all social. And you can email us if you have questions or concerns or comments. Um, info at Four Freaky Girls Podcast. Um, ladies, this was pretty dope. This was great. Yeah, Thank you. Was nice. <laughs> we can continue the conversation and uh, yeah, y'all let us know yeah. your thoughts and feelings. So um, with that, we're going to go ahead and sign off until we'll we see you next, see you next time. time. Keep right. freaky freaky leaks. Yes. Bye. See ya. Bye.